hi everyone you're welcome back to my channel my name is nancy and if you're new to my channel kindly subscribe share and like my videos and also put the notification bell to be notified when i upload new tutorials today's tutorial is a requested tutorial on how to make a loose shirt the amount of fabric i used in making this shirt is one yard in width and by 60 in length these are the essential measurements the waist circumference is 50 the hip is 52 the crotch length is 11 inches the tie circumference is 32 inches the waist to hip is 8.5 inches and the full length of the shirt is 19 inches so let's get started the first step is to fold the fabric into two the first horizontal line is called the starting line and also known as the waistline of the pants now take note that there will be a waistband of 2 inches and to achieve that you need to place the tip vertically on the waistline to deduct 1.5 inches so by the time you secure the waistline it becomes 2 inches now the next line is the crotch depth line which is 11 inches and for beginners who are not sure of what the crotch depth is or how the crotch depth measurement is taken i'll be dropping the link in the description box on how to take a measurement for a female pant all right i guess i skipped one measurement after the waistline the next measurement should have been the hip line so the measurement taken from our waistline to the hip line was 8.5 inches so i'll mark this now for clarity this is the waistline the hip line and the crotch depth line now the last horizontal line should be the length of the shirt the length of the shirt is 19 inches i added two inches to an allowance to that which made it 21 inches so this is the waistline the hip line the crotch depth line and the full length of the pants the next step is to get the hip curve of this shirt and this is done by placing your tip on the edge of the waistline to mark one inch then you connect this one inch point to the hip line as shown since the m or the leg opening of this shirt isn't tight there is no need for us to make a little shape at this corner the next step is to place the tape on the waistline to mark the waist circumference divided by four the waist circumference divided by four is 12.5 inches but because of the dart that we need on the waistline, I added half inch to that, which made it 13 inches. Now I'll be adding the sewing allowance of just one inch. Now I'll place the tape on the hip line to mark the hip circumference divided by four. The hip circumference divided by four is 13 inches. Plus one inch sewing allowance to the side to connect this waist point to the hip point as shown. Now on the crotch depth line, I'll place my tape to mark the tie circumference divided by two the tie circumference is 32 inches divided by two i have 16 inches so add one inch sewing allowance to the side then i'll connect these two points to form a crotch and this is the crotch depth of the pants take note that i used one inch sewing allowance for the waistline the hip line and the crotch depth line and the reason i added just one inch to the side is because i don't want the center seems to have extra fabric folding on the m line which is also the leg opening of the shirt i'll be placing the tie circumference divided by two which is 16 inches minus one inch and that will be 15 inches altogether to connect this point to the crotch points as shown also take note that the tie circumference was used for the leg opening because the leg opening isn't fitted it's loose and that is why i said that we are making a loose shirt today the next step is to trim out the front piece of the shirt Alright, this is the front piece. I need to place it on the folded fabric to cut out the back piece. For the back piece, I also have my fabric folded into two. The next step is to place the front piece of the pants on the folded fabric. 
making sure that the waistline of the back piece is two inches higher than the waistline of the front piece as shown. Now on the center seam of the waistline, I'll mark half inch. To connect this point to the edge of the waistline as shown. And the essence of taking out this little piece is to make sure that the band relaxes well in the center front of the pants. The next step is to place the tip on the center seam of the waistline to mark 2 inches above that point. Then you connect it to the edge of the waistline as shown. This is one of the most important parts you shouldn't miss when making a pant. Because if you omit this step, you find out that the pants won't cover the butt. And I've seen so many comments on that. So this is a step they miss that caused that problem. Now I went ahead to keep marking 2 inches sewing allowance to the crotch line. Alright, now on the crotch depth line, you should mark 2.5 inches. Normally, I usually use 2 inches for a medium sized person. But because this person has a hip of 52 inches, I use 2.5 inches. Now I went ahead to just keep marking the 2 inches I marked initially for the crotch line to the leg opening. Now I'll connect the dotted lines together. So this is the back piece of the shirt. The next step is to cut it out. Recall that we added a half inch that allowance when we measured the waistline. Now I need to mark the point to which the dart is going to be. The dart measurement is gotten by dividing the bust span into two. Our bust span is 10 inches. I divided it into two, which gave me 5 inches. But because of the center seam sewing allowance, I added half inch sewing allowance, which made it 5.5 inches. Now I marked this point vertically upward to the back piece so i can notch the dart for both the front piece and the back piece as shown the next step is to secure the crotch curve of the pants now i'll take this to the same machine to secure the crotch curve of the front piece and also secure the crotch curve of the back piece after securing the crotch curve of the front piece the next step is to secure the darts which is on the front piece. So I'm going to secure the dart half inch wide to a length of about 4 inches. And I'll also secure the second dart half inch wide to a length of about 4 inches. For the back piece, I secured the crotch curve. Now I'll also secure the dart to about 4 inches in length for the back piece. So this is the front piece of the pants and the dart is secured. Now I'm going to fold this front piece into two equally so I can easily get my pocket measurements. For the pockets, you should mark 2.5 inches from this edge horizontally and you place the tip vertically to mark 7 inches in length to connect the two points together now you should trim this out the next step is to cut out the pocket itself so this is the fabric piece i'll be working with for the pocket i folded the fabric into two and the wideness of this fabric is 9 inches, while the length of the fabric is 11 inches. So this is 9 by 11 inches. Take note that if you want the pocket to be deeper than mine, you should use a length of 13 inches instead of 11 inches. So this is the second piece for the second pocket. I want you to understand that this pocket is very easy to fix, so kindly pay attention. 
Now I'm just going to bring a little piece I cut out from the side of the shirt. Then I'll go ahead to spread out the pockets. Take note that this is just a single pocket. The next step is to place this little piece I cut out from the shirt on one side of the pocket. And this is a guide on how the pocket was shaped. Recall that we are working with two pockets and you don't want to make a mistake of cutting same pocket shape. In order to avoid that, you need to place the two pockets right side to right side. So you can trim out the other side properly. So I went ahead to spread out the front piece. The next step is to fix the pockets. Looking at the shape on this side, you will notice that this doesn't fit this side of the pocket. This simply means it's for the other side. But take a look at the second pocket. Obviously, the slant side of the pocket fits properly. Now I'll take this to my sewing machine to secure the slant side by half inch. Alright, the slant side of the pocket is secure. The next step is to flip the pocket below the shirt. Now I'll take this to the sewing machine to secure on this folded slant side by quarter of an inch. After I secure the slant side of the pocket, this is how it should be. The next step is to fold the pocket into two equally. After folding the pocket into two, you will notice that the hip curve isn't obvious anymore. All you have to do is to bring back the little piece you cut out, then you place it after the secured side of the pocket to trim out the excess fabric by the side. So this is simply how it's done. Now I'll pin the top part of the pocket. After I pinned the top part of the pocket, I raised one leg of the shirt to secure the bottom of the pocket by stitching this side. So I get to this point, so also stitch there. Alright, so we've achieved the side pockets for the left part of the pants. The next step is to repeat the same pocket sewing process to secure this right side of the pocket. Alright, I've secured the second pocket. The next step is to place the back piece of the shirt on the front piece of the shirt to secure the sides by one inch. After securing the sides of the shirt, the next step is to secure the M of the pants to the flap by half inch. Now I'll turn the shirt to the right side of the fabric. And since I'll be including a zipper to one side of the pants, you need to open one side of the seam from the waistline down to about 7 inches. Then make sure you stitch where the opening stopped so it doesn't lose. After that, I'll place my tape on the waistline to take the entire measurements of the waist circumference. And what I have here is... 51 inches this simply means that i need a band length of 51 inches but in order for us not to make a mistake i can just add extra three inches to the 51 inches 
and that will be 54 inches all together so this band length is 54 inches and the wideness of this band is 5 inches i folded the band into two and then i gummed half side of the band with a paper stay or you can use a gum stay the next step is to attach the waistband to the waist of the shirt and to do this you need to place the side of the waistband without the gum stay on the wrong side of the waist circumference as shown to stitch it half inch all through the waist after stitching the waist to the waistband of the shirt the next step is to fold the waistband into two to secure it but in a case where you need to insert an elastic you don't just fold the waistband into two to secure it so i'm going to be showing you how this is done by taking this to the sewing machine to show you how to insert the elastic band for this shirt i want the elastic band to be at the entire waist of the back piece and this simply means that the elastic band will start from one side of the center seam and this is going to end at this other side of the side seam that has the zip allowance in it now i'll take this to the sewing machine Now I'm going to make a stretch stitch to one inch. After that, I'm going to insert my one inch elastic band into the waistband as shown. The next step is to raise the machine footer. So you can make a vertical line in such a way that it holds down the elastic just by stitching on it. You reverse back to raise the footer so you can continue securing the waistband that was folded into two, making sure that now it isn't sewing directly on your elastic band. And when I got to this other side seam, I stop stitching directly on the side seam. Now the next step is for you to drag the elastic or pull the elastic a little. Then if you feel like you've pulled it enough, you can stop pulling. All right, at this point, I think I've pulled the elastic enough. I'll raise my machine footer to stitch directly on the elastic vertically as shown. Then I'll reverse to also continue the horizontal stitching I was doing initially. And before going further, make sure you cut out the excess elastic. Now I'll just keep securing my waistband. So this part without the elastic is actually the front piece of the waistband. After securing the waistband, I attach the zipper to the hip side opening that was initially loosed before. Alright, so this is the back of the waistband. If you are used to my tutorials, you realize that after sewing my pants, I like to fold it into two before folding the hem, just because I want to be sure that both legs are equal. Obviously, you can see that the shirt isn't equal. Now I placed my tape to mark the actual length of the shirt. The actual length of the shirt is 19 inches, so I added 2 inches to an allowance which made it 21 inches. So I'm just going to trim this out. 
now i'll take this to the overlocking machine to weave the hem so it's very neat before folding after i weave the hem i folded the shirt into two exactly the same way it was folded initially and just because i overlocked the edges i'm sure that the sewing allowance will be 1.5 inches left on the hem so i just folded this in by 1.5 inches hoping that it should give me 19 inches in length now okay this is perfect it's 19 inches i have to fold the second leg opening to make sure that they are both equal after which i'm going to use my pressing iron to secure it so that it gives me a line that will be a guide to fold it properly when stitching All right, guys so after ironing you can see that it stayed firm the next step is to take this to your sewing machine to secure the aim all through so this is the final outcome i hope this tutorial was helpful and if you are new to my channel kindly subscribe share and like my videos and also put on the notification bell to be notified when i upload new tutorials thank you for watching to the very end